Welcome everyone to Soul Tribe. My name is Medina and it's wonderful to have you here. Thank you so much for joining me. I have a fantastic show planned for everyone today. So I'm excited to tell you about it. Uh, we have um, an amazing theme, which is designing our best life and how do we do that? And our special guest today is a wonderful lady from Sydney called Natasha Sedoti who is a naturopath, nutritionist, and herbalist, plus a mum. And she's been involved in helping to create a new um, progressive alternative education system for her children and for the community around her as children. So it'll be fantastic to talk to her. She's a great example of someone who's really being proactive about community. And as the show is all about community, Soul Tribe, uh, you know, it's a great theme to have today. So I'd like to start the show by sharing with you, as I always do, a beautiful prayer. And I wanted to mention with you that um, I am going to be sharing all these PDFs and, and prayers and invocations from previous shows with you uh, on my website. I haven't been able to set it up yet. It takes a bit of time. So in about a week or two weeks, I'll have it all set up and you'll be able to go past previous shows and access these prayers and invocations and go in and get a copy of them for yourself. And um, that I'll, I'll go over this in a, in a show that's coming up in terms of all the information that we've already covered that will be available for you. I'll, I'll revise all that and go through when it's all set up. So don't worry, it's all going to be there for you to access. So this prayer is just a lovely prayer to start the show with. I command sacred space be in place and protected now. Thank you. And so it is. I now invite all the most appropriate beings of the highest, purest, Christed light to be with me now, please. Thank you. And so it is. I now invoke my highest self and ask you to guide me through this show today, please. Thank you. And so it is. I ask to be filled with Christ consciousness now, please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And to surround, you know, this show with our beautiful heart-based unconditional love energy so everyone who views this show can feel this beautiful energy and we can connect together in this energy as well so that we are all feeling this higher frequency vibration and this connection which is so important this unity consciousness as we move forward so combining all our hearts together and connecting together uh thank you doug we can um move on from that pdf now and my very first thing that i'd like to talk about today is a very important topic that is in the consciousness at the moment so you know we've just had this amazing movie being released called the sound of freedom and i had a client ask me how do i deal with this she said i'm getting um guidance in a sense to to be aware of it and to watch it but I'm also very sensitive and I feel like if I watch it I might you know get PTSD you know trauma symptoms or, or you know it might impact me in a negative way that 
really affects um, how I'm feeling. So I spoke to that with her in the session and so I thought it would be a really important thing to share because there's a lot of people asking this at the moment. How do I navigate these energies with all this uh, very intense information coming about out about what has been happening on our planet that is of a very um, obviously nefarious lower vibration and, 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 you know, very, very sort of tragic, some of this information. So what I said was, it's really good to be aware of things that are happening in the world, but it's most important to be guided by your inner barometer. So knowing yourself better than anyone else, you can say to yourself, is it appropriate for me to watch this movie? I know that Janet Osabard was talking about it and she was saying that whether you're sensitive or not, everyone should watch the movie regardless, rah, 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 rah. And I get that. I totally get that. We really want to support this incredible movie, which, by the way, has absolutely blitzed it around the world completely. Um, the, the numbers of people seeing it are phenomenal, millions and millions. So it's it's so exciting that this uh, new um, awareness is going around the planet now. Of what's truly been happening with the children and the trafficking so um anyway she says that everybody should watch it regardless i have a different opinion i think that if you are sensitive and that if you are very empathic and sensitive and you can be deeply affected by these things then i think listen to that i think that's really important we need to have um boundaries in place we need to have discernment about what we do watch knowing that we are our own best protector of protecting our energies I mean we know that this is a very um a very sad topic and that it can affect us very deeply on an emotional level so I think just be very mindful of protecting your own energy and um you can also apply that to everything else, you know, on social media, on Telegram and so forth about what you watch because you don't want to go into a state of um, trauma when then you have to deal with that. That doesn't serve you and it doesn't serve the collective at all. Uh, it's very important to have these boundaries and also remembering that, you know, when we do go into lower vibrational states, then the dark um, love that because they can feed off our energy. They call it louche. So, you know, we don't want to feed their energy. Not that there's many dark beings left. You know, there are the minions running around still. But, you know, we really want to keep as high a frequency as possible to be aware, yes, you know, to, 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 to be aware of what's going on, but also having really clear um, discernment and boundaries about what we allow ourselves to tap into at this time. So I hope that answers that question for um, people that have been um, asking about that, you know, because we want to do the right thing, you know, we, we have so many of us want to do the right thing by the collective and we want to help support such an incredible movie. But I do think that you need to be aware of your own energy and how much you're able to deal with. And I know there have been some people that said that they couldn't watch it. Um, so I'll just leave that one there. And um, I'm going to move on now to the topic of designing your best life. Uh, so my question for you is, how are you going now? Are you living your best life? There's so much going on in terms of the destruction of our old reality. So how much energy are you putting into creating the new reality, the new world that you want to live in, the, the fifth dimensional world, the new golden age? Um, so for myself, um, I've been able to manifest some aspects of, you know, a better life, which is really great, but I'm not all the way there yet. I'm still working on it, as we all are. You know, um, there's some things I've, I've, I've got to, total nail you know I've totally nailed but the other things I'm still working with you know I'm living in a, a beautiful location on an island overlooking dolphins and water which is really gorgeous um, I actually used to visualize that um, living on the water with the palm tree and I've got all that which is gorgeous um, have you know some beautiful friends beautiful connections 
I'm part of some wonderful communities, including my amazing Patreon community. Shout out to all the Patreon community. Um, and there's, you know, still things to work on um, that are important for me. This, but it's overall going in a good direction, in the right direction. And I feel a lot of the time that I'm already in five-dimensional energy. Um, you know, sometimes I go in and out of 3D, 4D, but I think predominantly I feel like I'm in 5D really a lot of the time, which is great. So um, I want you to think about, and I'm going to get questions a bit later, but I want you to think about how do we create our best life? So one way is to think about a time in your life when you were truly happy and fulfilled. So to just pick one of those times in your life and remember it and revisit it and feel the energy of it. Use your imagination, which is one of our greatest superpowers is our imagination, to close your eyes and not only uh, imagine it in, in your mind, in your mental body, but to feel how it feels to experience that again. Maybe it was the birth of your children. Maybe it was meeting the love of your life. Maybe it was... Um, a beautiful pet that you bought home. I remember when we bought our beautiful puppy home, I cried because <laughs> he was so adorable and I was so happy. Um, and um, so, you know, those, those sort of energies of going back, tapping into that can be really helpful in recreating that same frequency and that same energy now. And I want you just for a minute um, to imagine your perfect um, experience that you've had in this lifetime that was a really a high frequency experience that was really special and I'm going to play for you a song um, it's a song that I wrote and recorded and it's again it's a high frequency I've had a few people lovely people asking me to uh, they said they'd like to hear my music so this is um, an original track of my music I've got all a whole lot of music on my website this was a song that I wrote as part of the Songs of Angels tour that I toured in um, country Victoria. And um, it was A Touch the Suns was the name of the tour. And um, I went to, you know, galleries and homes and things like that and did this um, sort of a small concert tour around Victoria. And um, this was one of the songs. Uh, this was a song actually um, that is, um, I think I, I realised afterwards I wrote it for my mum. But I'm going to play it for you. And as you watch it and listen to it, I want you to um, just imagine that um, you are experiencing this life that you, um, or this experience again that you really loved, you know, when when in this lifetime. And just really tap into it, feel the feelings, smell the smells, you know, um, feel yourself touching that experience on, on every level. And this is what's going to be really a great tool in your toolkit. So here's the song where I want you to feel also the frequency of the song as well. Maybe you'll know it before very long. 
summertime. We believe, touch everything underneath. So that one was <laughs> written for my mum, actually, it turned out to be. Um, and um, the topic is greener fields. So it's always saying that there's um, a, an even better reality waiting for you if you just tune into it and you co-create it for yourself. So I um, hope you enjoyed that. That's Those tracks are available on my website at medina.com. If anyone would like to listen to more, um, they're there. Um, so... Uh, this is a tool in your toolkit to focus and visualize on something that you loved in your life. Another tool in your toolkit that you can use is to grab a pen and a paper and go to your computer or, or either write it down organically. Sometimes when we write things down physically, it actually works better. And to um, just write a story about a perfect life in your eyes. So you can write it in third person or you can write it in first person. You can start with bullet points of so the things that are the main things that you think are important to have in, 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 the, in a life that is perfect for you. You know, perfect health, being in a loving relationship. Um, thank you, Laurie. Appreciate that. Thank you very much. Um, um, quaint and stylish, you know, an art studio, or maybe you love exercising and you love to have a gym. But what are the what are the main points for you that are really important for you to have in your perfect life? Jot down bullet points and then write a story and, and weave it into a story in third person. And uh, like it's already happened, you can then place this under your pillow, read it every morning when you get up or at the end of the day before going to sleep, remembering too that, you know, when we go to sleep, we're in a different uh, brain state that actually helps us to manifest in the state between being awake and being asleep. And so these are some really good techniques that you can use, <coughs> sorry, to be able to manifest your best life. And um, on that note, I'd like to also share with you a little video that is one um, about I've, I'm working on a documentary with a, a filmmaker and some other amazing people, and it's called The New Golden Age, and it's about manifesting our best reality and some people that are actually doing that in Australia and a few globally as well. And so what I'd like to do is um, put a little call out to any creatives or filmmakers out there, documentary makers that are interested in this humanitarian project. And, um, you know, if you have skills and you'd like to join in and help us to create this amazing documentary to really inspire and uplift and encourage people to step into their, um, you know, their gifts and their skills and to create a new um, heaven on earth for us all. If that resonates with you and you'd like to be part of it, please contact me. I've got a little... Um, um <laughs> fcb says grunchy confirmed you one definitely already operating in 5d energy beautiful that's fantastic yes and people will feel this more and more i think at the moment that they're operating in that fifth dimensional energy because uh the 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 uh solar energy and the cosmic energy is really supporting this upliftment at the moment 
incredible increments of um, upgrades that we're receiving all the time in our DNA and at a cellular level. So here is uh, just a little um, video to encourage anyone out there that has um, um, gifts or skills in the area of video to feel welcome to participate. So I'm just going to put this on now. Okay, and um, so that is um, a call out there to you. And actually, Natasha, a beautiful guest who's coming up, amazing woman, and she is actually in the documentary. She has a lot of fantastic information to share. That's why she's here today. And she is from Sydney. She's a nutritionist, a uh, naturopath, and a herbalist. And as I mentioned earlier, she is part of the homeschool revolution, which is creating a new education system for uh, children that is based on more progressive ways of learning. So welcome to Natasha. I'd love to invite you in. Hi, Natasha. <laughs> Lovely to see you. Hello, Medina. Thank you so much for having me and for your beautiful introduction. And thank you for your song. Oh, thank you. Uh, you're so welcome. Um, it, it, it's lovely to be able to share it. I had a few people ask. They said, oh, we'd like to hear a song. So there you go. Oh, <laughs> that's that's one of my songs. Thank and the you. prayer at the beginning, I felt tingles all over. It was really powerful um, to remember the importance of just taking a moment to bring in why we're here to remind ourselves. Uh, thank you for that reminder. It made a big difference to how I'm feeling right now. Oh, fantastic. That, that's really lovely to hear that feedback. So, Natasha, I am very excited to have you. There's so many things we can talk about. You have really been um, proactive in contributing to your community, which is brilliant. And you also have some wonderful skills in the area of health and wellness with your naturopathy and your um, herbalist um, knowledge. So, in your estimation, what do you think is important in designing your best life? Great question. And I'll start with the 3D answer. Yes. <laughs> and then I thought we could take the escalator up um, as, as we continue to chat. Um, hi, everyone. It's lovely to connect with you all. Thank you for being part of something so powerful, so important. And uh, just like Medina, I am co-creating my best life right now. It's not a fixed um, or finished process. It's far from perfect. But like what Medina was saying, I am starting to feel these waves of I call them flow state and this interconnection that I've not felt on this level before. Even in a really simple day-to-day -day experience, it can feel a little bit different. And um, I might, I'm not sure I'm as visual as Medina is, but it's more a sentient experience for me. So I can actually just feel my body connecting with people through beautiful and simple moments, um, really noticing nuances in nature around me that have probably always been there. And I'm just really noticing them now. On that um, note, can I ask you about your beautiful waratah behind you? Speaking oh, yeah. <laughs> so speaking of nature, this is the Australian waratah. And it's part of my logo, but also really appropriate because the metaphysical representation of the waratah is around the dark night of the soul. Perfect. And we are truly going through this collective phoenix rising moment and whilst we are so passionate and feeling moments, I'm, I'm sure we're all feeling moments of excitement and joy, we're also seeing a lot of our shadow and it's, it's happening at once. So I'll just read to you the symbolism of the Australian bushflower waratah. It's something you can call on when you're feeling <sighs> despair. If you're feeling that dark night of the soul, it could be days, it could be hours, it could be months. Some people have it for quite some time. 
So one side of the energetics is black despair, hopelessness, the inability to respond to crisis. So that's one aspect. But the energetic doctrine of signatures of this plant, what it offers us, if you want to bring it into a meditation, is courage, tenacity, adaptability, strong faith, and the enhancement of survival skills. Oh, that's perfect for this moment, isn't it? Yeah. You know, just with the great intensity of this transition that we're going through, um, that is perfect. Uh, Cindy says welcome as well. Thank, oh, you, thank you so much, Cindy. <laughs> it's beautiful to see you. Um, yeah, it is perfect. And I like to draw on nature a lot, especially when I am feeling despair or overwhelmed, like you were speaking about with the Sound of Freedom content. And that's just one of many examples. You can feel despair, overwhelm, and what can I do? Uh, I connect in with nature. Nature never operates alone. It's an entire ecosystem and we are developing the mycelium of our human ecosystem and refining that intuitive network that was always there but being quite asleep. And it's like What's we're dusting mycelium? it off. Ah, so the mycelium is my analogy for it's fungi have a mycelium and it looks like internet wiring beneath the soil or their root system. And it's it's incredibly complex and intricately connected and they all talk to one another for kilometres. Okay. And that's what we're starting to do. We're waking up different neuro pathways and spiritual energetic highways that mm. haven't, been, haven't been accessed by so many people all at once. Well, I've got to tell you an example of that. I did an interview that's going on my channel, Arise Humanity, amazing interview with Ian Welsh, and he's taking this um, actual um, incredibly whole, holy water, he calls it, with gold, myrrh and frankincense in, in it. So he's of now a very, very, it was already a high vibration and now he's even higher. So I just started sneezing when I was talking to him because he's such a, I was getting like a triggering and reaction. I was trying to interview him. I was going, oh, choo, <laughs> It was really funny. Beautiful. And um, yeah, so that's an example. His energy at, at taking that um is really shifting other people's energy just by you know talking to him so well his quantum field is well yeah. beyond his physical skin you know and, and and yours is already ready to be receptive to that yes that, yes that's really beautiful and look speaking of myrrh on a more dense physical body level i'm prescribing it all the time at the moment as well for people who have wow. you know covid like fatigue vaccine injuries flus congestion so myrrh also helps us up level our immune system not just our spiritual growth yes and you can ask to have a um a cocoon of of whatever quality you need placed around you energetically and and just tap into that so i asked to have a so a cocoon of myrrh energy um placed around me so that i can absorb that and integrate it for my highest good mm. and 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 um i, I love that because you can mm. you can just ask for those things now so <laughs> that's really beautiful um as far as designing our best lives I, I do still feel the the state of our physical body needs to be strong and resilient not just our spiritual so and mental intellectual oh, body so true brilliant point yeah and it's a juggle isn't it so you may oh. meet some people that are physically and very robust and resilient but they might not have put as much energy into their their spiritual aspect and their energy body yeah and vice, and vice versa Yes, yes. Yeah. It's interesting, isn't it? Because you can be incredibly strong physically, but if you're emotionally not in balance, mm -hmm. that can just throw you off. So you mm -hmm. ideally want to have your mental, emotional, spiritual and physical all generally yeah, just... in balance with each other. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and we chose to, I, I believe we chose to incarnate in the physical form for a reason. Mm -hmm. And, it, you know, it's not to entirely dismiss this beautiful shell that we've we've come into it's to honor it and to integrate with it mm. um so so one of the things i'm noticing that's important for all of us myself included and look i didn't even take the covid injections at all but i have noticed my new immune system has needed more support this yes. year I've so noticed you've noticed yeah. that too so immune yeah. system support yeah. is crucial oh. and and almost just as important is detoxifying the physical body because as you were mentioning around this transition period, there's energetic toxins and physical toxins that we need to filter constantly, daily. Um, and to really value the importance of your detoxification system, the less that we support it, the more of a filter we are for everything. And 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 on top of that, you're getting upgrades. So you mm. you it's like you want to clean out the cupboard, 
as you're um, doing your spring cleaning, <laughs> you want to clean out the cupboard, get rid of everything there, and then you can make space for that new energy to come in. Beautifully said. Yeah, so it is a bit of a decluttering of all kinds, isn't it? Yes, yeah, totally, totally. Yeah. And, 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 and I think actually too maybe, uh, and, and maybe this is incorrect, but the longer you've been on the planet, um, you've got a bit more to do because you've had more accumulation. <laughs> so more onion layers. <laughs> Yeah, it's a catch-22, all that experience, isn't it? <laughs> I know. It's got its upside, it's got its downside. Yeah. Yeah. So, look, every day I start my morning with um, a really beautiful warm drink. For me, this is what works for my body, and that's why I, I actually never recommend a copy-paste model for anything. Mm -hmm. But And you can always reach with, out to someone who's a holistic practitioner near you to clarify where your body's at and what works for you. What works for me is a really beautiful warm cacao with some organic mushroom mixed through it and a good amount of fat and it just seems to be this beautiful adaptogenic which means it helps you adapt to stress in any direction when something's adaptogenic and that's yep. what we re really need right now it's this adaptability yes. to to manage high levels of stress in a really appropriate calm and steady grounded way and really good fats as well so that our blood sugar level isn't all over the place because when our blood sugar levels all over the place, our decision-making is poor, our spirit body, our energy body actually flutters as well when our physical body yeah. is fluttering. Yes, um, yes. Yeah, we've dragon had chats with you and I about this, haven't we, protein we and have. fat? <laughs> we totally have. And dragon fruit, actually, interestingly, because a friend was growing dragon fruit, is a great um, fruit for... Um, balancing blood sugar levels oh beautiful which is interesting mm. I, I had had cindy just mentioned a question there and she said um doesn't white light do it all would you like <laughs> to address that I, I can as well but go ahead uh, well i i think you're more qualified to address that question i don't pretend to know everything cindy so i'm more than happy for people to challenge me on my views for where i'm at and what i'm seeing with clients coming through is our physical 3D bodies continue to need support with physical 3D tools mm -hmm. over and above the visualisation and the energetic work. They're both really important. There may be a time that it just isn't. And there may be some characters that can transcend all of that and barely need, you know, air is all they mm -hmm. need. Perhaps, yeah. that's, perhaps that is our future. Yeah. But for now, um, no, for me it's uh, intention into physical practice as well and intention with it is still a powerful tool and I think for many people they'll they'll still need that for this time. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. I think a holistic um, approach is going to be really beneficial right now. FCB says, um, me too, no jab, but need immune support. Yes, I, I totally get that. I'm the same. So it, it's like you're looking at all the different aspects and you're addressing them all rather than one specific area. I don't think we've got to the point yet most of us, you know, except the rare few that are at that really, really high level, you know, got to the point yet where we can just focus on the energy work and just that aspect alone necessarily. I think I think it's really good to to be working on nurturing ourselves on every level at the moment. I, I just think that makes sense to me. Um, and you're covering your bases then, you know. <laughs> Hedging your bets. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. So yeah. um what so, I've noticed is um, yeah. when it comes to, sorry to cut you off there, Medina, no. but around immune support, because the energetics are changing, I've noticed people are more responsive to liquid herbal tonics, which is a variety of plant medicine mixed together, than, say, your classic tablet or powder supplement. And I do think that's because of the energetic integrity of the medicine. Um, oh, the I same applies that. to homeopathics. Yes, I do wonder about that because, you know, when you buy... Um, supplements now a lot of the companies are under basically the same corporations but they're under different uh, mm -hmm. names and brands to look like they're different companies but they're actually under the same corporation which is a often a you know big harmer <laughs> is, yeah. is under control and then you wonder what's in them so it, yeah you, unless you're really sure of, of where you're getting them and the integrity of of mm -hmm. those mm -hmm. I think those natural herbalist type approaches that are really clever at the minute yeah and and we don't seem to be as resistant to say a liquid tonic with maybe seven different plants mixed together as we may be to more singular uh simpler formulas so the resistance of the immune system isn't there um 
if you can manage the taste, and it is bitter, but it's just how we used to eat food, et cetera. We used to have bitter in our life a lot more. Um, it's really nothing compared to the dark night of the soul as far as challenges go. <laughs> and yeah. if you can find, if you can find a nearby herbalist that knows what she or he is doing, they can bespoke something for your body and there's no added anything in it. It's not from a mass manufactured energetic space. And you can also add your own intention and blessing through the tonic as you have it in the morning. I, I really recommend that if you can. Yes, and, and with all food, you know, blessing all food. At the moment, I've got to a point now where um, I get challenged if I don't bless the food before I eat it. So, What, it, what do you mean? What happens? Well it, well, it can impact my energy unless I bless it first in, in, in some, you know, negative way if I don't know exactly, you know, because I can't, I don't eat all um, food that's homegrown, unfortunately. Um, mm -hmm. So, but I try and have as, you know, much um, natural you know, food with life force as I can, but I, I don't grow my own food here. So I don't know um, where everything has it's been come from necessarily. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's some really good points about what people can um, work with at the moment. They can really support their systems. And every day, I feel like we need it every day. I mean, you yes. know, I'm sure I'm not the only one here who's looked up at the sky and thought, what am I breathing? <laughs> yes yes there are times yes. you know so and we've got our air and our water that needs to be filtered and detoxified let alone our food so the challenge on the physical body right now is unprecedented there's never been a time in this particular life history where we have been so challenged physically well i will say there's a lot of, there's a lot of a narrative that the um, and again, I heard it from Ian Welsh last night who used his dowsing rods that uh, for the last year or so, even more, we've been having the good stuff being sprayed into our ears to counteract the bad stuff that's been sprayed mm. prior to that. So, mm. um, you know, I, 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 I like to think that, that there are some really positive good things going on from the White Hats that are mm. um, supporting us. But nevertheless, I 100% agree that we have never needed energetically more um need for self-nurturing than we do now and that's yeah, not to go into said. fear yeah, yeah. It's, it's not to go into fear but it's to to just know that that is the sensible thing <laughs> that we all need to be doing at the moment yes. i mean i see it around me i i've got um friends many close friends i've had for years all got huge things they're dealing with at the minute and um mm. you know my heart goes out to them so with um, the Designing Your Best Life, I know that you have had a really fantastic role to play in the homeschool revolution. So tell us a little bit about that and perhaps um, Doug can share the details at the bottom. So if, you, if you're wanting to contact um, these people about the homeschool revolution, there's a... Um, a email there that's um, underneath that you can contact. But it's based around Sydney, isn't it, Natasha? That's right. So we're in our second year. We call ourselves a homeschooling bush community. Mm -hmm. uh, at the moment, we've got 20 students and four guardians. And just like the Waratah, it came out of the dark night of the soul. It, we came together uh, due to the mandates. And the, beyond the COVID narrative, just this domino effect of awakening into looking at the education system itself, pre-COVID pre narrative, and seeing, oh, my God, what on earth was I thinking um, sending my kids to school, basically? My kids were in a mainstream school. I have three children. And my husband and I were thankfully on the same page there that, you know, it's really important when you're co-parenting that there can be compassion, empathy, and really uh, constructive communication around what we want our children to learn, what's important moving into not just the golden age but into a completely different time when it comes to technological capacity, resources and skill sets that yeah. will be needed. Mm -hmm. And we meet five days a week, um, you know, so parents that need to work, this is still a viable option. And what I like about it is it's communal. So we're not putting all of the education responsibility on one or two parents alone, um, mm -hmm. which is a lot of pressure on a family as a single unit. Yeah. And also clever by design because, as you know, we're in a society that's so individualised and isolating Mm -hmm. Of course, your only other option is also isolating by, mm -hmm. by strategic design. 
So it's about building something better that is neither straight homeschooling nor is it a regular school. We are much more involved as parents and I'm not the only one that's played a big part. You know, there are some parents that have done phenomenal work sharing their space and time so generously. And the realisation of, oh, I've actually got some value to bring. I can, it's not just outsourcing all the time. I could actually teach something. I could actually bring something. Oh, totally. Yeah. And finding that in yourself, it's it's yeah. a little bit scary at first when you're asked to do something with the kids. You think, well, I wasn't very good at maths. What am I going to do? And you've got to retrain, rewire and think, no, hang on, I have value. What can I bring? Well, your, your skills would be perfect because, I mean, I think children need to learn how to really look after themselves, like physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and you'd be brilliant at that, at teaching them that, you know, how to eat properly, nutrition-wise, how to um, look after the physical vehicle, you know, with, with our nature's herbs and everything that you'd be perfect for that um <laughs> i have to say they're very good at taking herbal tonics these kids in a really amazing way because usually kids go ah so they're definitely on that but they're so physical and they're mainly based in nature so nature is their main teacher mother mother oh, yes. earth is their, their their main holder of their I experience love that. that is so good i heard another model too uh just this week where there was um a teacher who was being paid by the parents uh so they'd all all the parents uh would pay the teacher and she would just teach kids and they would create their own curriculum that they thought was um mm. ideal for the kids so that that was mm. another interesting model but i love you this should. fact that these new communities are springing up and doing things that now align with the energies that are relevant for now you know yes. the old model was based on the industrial revolution the old school model and it's so outdated and kids don't resonate with it so no wonder they don't sit still in class and they can't learn because it's just you know yeah. um totally inappropriate for the energies that we're in now um yes. fantastic so and it has um, a, um, a prussian origin the mainstream oh. education system originates its origin story comes from a model in Prussia designed to create compliant and obedient soldiers and you can see that watered down in a modern mm. costume but really then you think okay then it was also adapted to the industrial era where people parents were working really hard really long hours so they just needed something babysitting essentially and also to create students that would also be good factory workers and good compliant employees yes and just listen and not speak back and then you know the bell goes off and when the bell goes they have to go and do something and so there's this subconscious you know, that they have to respond to and you can see the um the robotic aspects of the um current education system and yes. um how it dumbed us all down um but yes. hopefully we we escape some of that um programming well what okay. i like about what you're saying is that we've we've been a part of it and we're waking up so isn't that beautiful to know that i don't know about you but i was in a very mainstream education experience in a private school which was oh, all gosh, about me too <laughs> yes. but look at us now having this conversation so there's something within us that's waking up regardless of whether we've had those exposures from from a really young age mm. and i think that's that gives me hope and uh, you know another aspect of not just designing our best life individually but collectively we're very much in this beautiful, fragile seed planting stage where we're learning. Um, so I feel like compassion is a really important aspect of designing your best life now, both for yourself and for your community, because it's new terrain. It's like we're pioneering. Yes, we're going out of our head and we're going into our heart and we're sort of functioning from that energetic space as opposed mm. from just in that mind that's disconnected from um, the, the emotions and, and is um, much more able to be programmed as well. Yeah, so it's probably going to be harder and harder to program us if we're coming from that space, that inner compass that you were talking about, your own inner compass. And and not maybe not so much your experience, Medina, but I still feel kind of clumsy in that in that space. Like I have days where I really nail it and days where I've gone back into more of a 3D um, paradigm of values. And, and, and compassion to myself that that's really natural when you're learning something and you're redirecting energy to more of a heart-based intelligence that like anything it needs practice it needs time and it needs time to get stronger yep you do need time to get stronger absolutely I think 
I think you've got to cut yourself some slack and, and yeah. just be um, kind to yourself. And, you know, we're just doing the best that we can with what we have. And it's easy to be uh, judgmental, but I think to be in a space of going through this without judgment of self, but just um, observing from a higher state that we're going through this completely new, unique process we've never been through before, which is this earthly transition, and that when we step out of judgment and just allow ourselves to go through it, it's going to be a much smoother and um, better process for us. Mm. Um, and, and again, that mental body is, is the aspect that judges, you know, that inner critic that, that stands up and says, you're doing this wrong, you're doing that wrong, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> you know? And how well practice is our inner critic? It's had years of practice, hasn't it? It has had so much practice, you know, and, you know, often we've had parents that have been that way with us because they've had parents that have been that way with them and then it just passes generation. Genera generationally <laughs> that's a hard word into down the line <laughs> yes yeah yeah that's that's right so one thing I've noticed is it's okay not to have especially in our community that we've got with this homeschooling bush community it's constantly evolving and every term we're tweaking and adjusting processes values or refining the value system, how we manage different challenges and when people come together you're always going to have challenges that's true <laughs> absolutely are one thing that I've noticed is when we just get together, the parents especially, and we chat in a circle, mm -hmm. it's really powerful. Even if we don't have an immediate solution, something shifts just from the alchemy and the intention of coming together that we've all acknowledged just by coming together. Yeah, there's still stuff we want to improve and evolve. We don't know all the answers, but it's this constant reminder and energetic it's reinvigorating energetically to be together physically in a circle again. That's a new thing, isn't it? I mean, we haven't really in our uh, nuclear families and in the way society was structured in the Western world anyway, we haven't had that model for how to work through issues, like even conflicts and things, to be able to sit down together and as uh, mature, evolved beings, to be able to um, find a, a negotiation or a resolution through things when we all have different opinions on things. And I think, you know, to be able to learn those skills coming together in a group is absolutely vital as we go forward. Um, Inner Compass says, I speak of this, oh, Inner Compass, Cindy says, I speak of this often. If you're not happy, you must follow your internal compass. Yeah, that's true. So um, I, I think that we need to develop these new ways of being in the world that we want to go in into. And mm. I think that, that's a really ex excellent point. So, mm. Natasha, with the... Um, the way the planet is at the moment and everything going on, is there anything else with your expertise that you would like to share that is supporting the collective at the moment? And if anyone would like to leave another question for Natasha underneath, um, we can take a few questions as well. Um, she's got amazing um, you know, knowledge to share. So what, what would you say would be something else that you would recommend at the moment for people who are thinking, what else can I do to support myself at the moment? Mm. I probably have at least two answers to that and one of them you know you that if neither feels right I actually don't recommend you do it but there are two areas where I think there can be really major breakthroughs um one is sound so actually sound healing where you you bypass the brain that very busy brain and I I've just noticed here in Sydney at least there's just constantly these beautiful sound healing events on offer and once again, you have that collective alchemy of being in circle with other like-minded people who are looking for that change and the energetic upgrade you receive from being in groups of people is medicine in and of itself. So I, I highly recommend if you are vibrationally sensitive or you're not and you'd like to sensitize yourself to really consider the importance of music as medicine and to be discerning as to the type of music that you expose yourself to because we are Oh, frequency. my gosh. That is so true. I was listening to some builders yesterday because I had to, to go somewhere and there was this building site and they were listening to this, 
you know, rappy, um, swearing music, <laughs> and it was just so jarring on my energy. <laughs> and I thought, how can I listen to that? And let alone all the stuff they say about the satanic stuff that goes on in the yeah. background with it all. So um, I think that that is a thing of the future, isn't it? It's um, mm. Energetic medicine will be probably more the primary form of support. So that's kind of going back to what someone was commenting on before around white light. I suspect eventually that will be what we need as more energetic frequency-based medicine and we're still not collectively quite at that stage. Yeah. So music is one of them. And the other one is not also, um, it, it's not for everyone, okay, so it needs to feel right. But plant medicine, there are master plants and some people find it very revolutionary to be in a safe space with really skilled people with clear intentions to participate in psychedelic plant medicine ceremonies mm -hmm. and you can there, there are micro dosing and macro dosing options and they are they're called master plants and even as a naturopath I've had to unlearn because these were not in my syllabus and I understand why because I was in a mainstream education system doing a degree in naturopathy so these pink elephants in the room these master plants that have been used for thousands of years were omitted from a herbalist syllabus which wow actually makes no sense so if you're curious to explore that and you feel you're in a good space in your life to 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 challenge yourself in that way in a loving safe setting I certainly don't recommend doing it alone and I recommend being really clear on who and how this is another form of alchemy and it is powerful it is a very powerful portal and they are amplifiers, so they're not necessarily going to discriminate between what they amplify. Mm. But they certainly like almost like a full moon shining the light on the stuff that we need to see. It's yep. a little bit like that. Um, <laughs> oh. Salud. There you go. There you go. <laughs> it's happening again. Um, so th those would be the two things for designing your good life over and above detoxifying well and supporting your immune system with regular, mm. regular plant medicine that's not psychoactive. There is the frequency of music, and then there are also very safely held and skillfully held ceremonies with plant medicine. Fantastic. And there's a lot of preparation prior, and it needs to be mm -hmm. respected. That includes really strong detoxification, really clean eating, clear intentions like you were saying, Medina, when you write down the story, imagining your best life. Very yes. similar approach of intention, focus, safety, caring for your body, mind, spirit uh, will make all the difference to your experience of those ceremonies. Fantastic, fantastic. Well, well, Natasha, I really want to thank you for all your beautiful words of um, wisdom and um, your beautiful energy. Uh, you're doing some great work in the world and I want to acknowledge you for that. And if anyone would like to contact Natasha, she has a website, which is Natasha Sidoti, S-I-D-O-T-I dot com. Thank you. And you can contact Natasha there. She she sees clients in the Sydney area. And um, so it was um, really wonderful to, to chat with you, Natasha. I'm sure we'll chat again soon. And thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you for your time. And keep me posted too about your homeschool revolution because okay. um, I think that's brilliant. That's what we need. <laughs> thank, thank you, Medina. Thank you for everything you're doing and have been doing for quite some time. I want to acknowledge that. It's not just the last year or so. You've been in this space for a very long time. So thank you. And um, lovely to connect with you all, everyone. Thank you for listening and just reach out if I could support you in any way. I'm available online as well if that's easier for you. Fantastic. Thank you, lovely. Lots of love. <laughs> Lots of love. <laughs> Bye. So um, that was wonderful chatting with Natasha. Um, I'd like to just share with people an amazing video that I uh, saw this week and I thought I'd love to share this on my show. It actually talks about the energies of what could potentially happen if we go into a solar flash experience. Now, I know many people are saying it's going to be an incremental process, this, this um, receiving the light, you know, from the cosmic sources, but there are some people that say there will be a solar flash. And so when you think about that, you know, what does that mean? How will that feel? What, what, what will that be like? And this video talks about exactly how it will feel, what it will be like, which is interesting because I know when I have meditated in the past, I have, oh, thank you, ranchers. Lovely to hear from you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, 
it is something where I've been able to receive, for example, like flashes of pure white light that have been like a blinding flash and then it's gone all through my third eye and through my body and it's it's a really a palpable experience of just like um incredible incredible experience of um of of light uh it's hard to describe and this is what they talk about in the video if there is potentially a solar flash event that happens because i think it's really good to think about if it does happen what's it going to be like and then it, it actually allows us to be in preparation for energetically if it does happen so i'm going to share that in a minute first of all i'd like to share on my pdf um, if I could get Doug to just uh, place that up, I'll just put it on the screen. And in the PDF here is um, just a reminder that I, if you could just pop the PDF up, Doug, that'd be great. <laughs> um, uh, it's just a reminder of mentoring sessions. So I do do mentoring with clients and I also do individual sessions. And please, if that resonates with you, the six weeks of mentoring, I've got some amazing clients and we're doing some incredible you know, work together. They present in the mentoring sessions with whatever they want to work on. For example, um, each session can be different. When they present, I can read the energetic field or they can say I want to work on such and such and we go in and we energetically work on shifting it, healing it, addressing it, transmuting it and then um, moving on. For example, I've had a few people working on inner child issues at the moment. There's some people working on um, issues with uh, relationships, for example, with a mother relationship. There's people working on um, transmuting things that are really coming up in a big way at the minute. And so these mentoring sessions are um, a bit more manageable financially for people and they allow you to have that continuity where you have many sessions to work with a range of techniques and healing. I also have an amazing light worker team too at my dis that disposal that that are able to work with people and help them. Um, incredible light workers that are doing an amazing job, and they can also work with your energy as well. So that's an additional thing. But these sessions are really able to accelerate your soul growth and your progress. So if that resonates with you, or if you just like one session with me, please go to my website. And the other one thing I want to mention before I share with you the amazing video we talked about was that, um, and, and you're welcome to stop sharing the screen now if you like, Doug. Um, the other thing I wanted to share with you was that I have some great workshops coming up, two live workshops with Ian Welsh. And if you want to find out about Ian Welsh, he's a UK um healer who um, is doing incredible work with people his workshops have been sold out I've done many workshops that I run with him and we have a workshop coming up on the 22nd of July for um, people to work through any emotional healing that they've still got that they haven't yet worked through so if you're holding on to emotional baggage in any form he will help actually energetically pull it out of you and work on shifting it with this workshop. And I'll be also supporting that energetically and with my um, healing abilities or my, oh, that's not the right word, with my with my things that I've learned to do with it, facilitating, helping, healing through my divine um, connection. It's not me, it's the divine that does it. But anyway, uh, so if that resonates with you, these workshops are incredible and in the last one, a lady was uh, presenting with some pain in her body. By the end of that, she'd actually shifted it and it was all gone. So most of the things that we're holding are based on emotional baggage at a cellular level that we've still got in our bodies. There is so much that we don't realise is actually to do with our emotions that we haven't healed it's wounding um, on, on some sort of cellular level that we're holding on to. So emotional um, work is very key at the moment in terms of our own soul evolution. And that workshop will really assist you with that. So that's at my website under the Ian Welsh workshops. The other workshop that is coming up on the 29th of July is 
a workshop to learn about dowsing. Now, I don't know if you know about dowsing, but it's a great tool to have. It's an extra skill or resource that we can access to be able to discern things, to, to find out about energy and, and to really discern, you know, what is truth um, for us using dowsing rods. And it, it's a great thing, you know, that it has been something that people have used um, for a long, long time, our ancestors used dowsing and it, it's a great tool in our toolkit. So if that resonates with you, the dowsing workshop, you can ask lots of questions. It's a small group and you'll be able to learn lots of things. It's He actually calls it a masterclass in dowsing. So that's at my website as well. Also have video workshops in a whole range of things for people to access. Um, I had um, somebody working with my protection workshop this week that absolutely loved it to help protect her energy. She thought she was being bombarded by some negative energies. That one has 25 resources in it to help you with um, really learning how to protect your energy yourself. You know, so these are to empower you so that you are self-empowered as opposed to putting your energy outside and getting someone else to do it for you. So on that note, I'd love to share with you this video and I thank you so much for being with me today and I'm going to put this video on now and this is a video by, I'm just going to bring it up on the screen, I'm just learning to work with all this equipment here, let me just bring it up on the screen here we go and it's called empathing the flash so just imagine this very interesting Empathic people feel frequencies and vibrations. The feelings transform themselves into images, and the images transform themselves into information of whoever you are empathic. Empathic means you are able to experience someone else's state of mind in an instant. What that means is that when you do the transfer at a speed of light through the eyes of another person, you can transfer your aware consciousness into that person's mind and in that split second absorb all their thinking and feelings and know exactly what that person is experiencing right there and then. The transfer is so fast that it can affect you emotionally until you can process and acclimate to the transfer's impact. This is what I sense it would be like during the flash event. We are on the precipice of having our body and soul restored to their original design. In this process and without any notice, while you are doing whatever it is that you are doing, you will begin to see this blinding light source quickly radiating from the sun. It will illuminate your entire visual spectrum no matter where you are. The light will be so bright that you won't be able to see anything except this brilliant, blinding white light. Then you will begin to feel frequency vibrations that will paralyze your ability to physically move. Not a panic-like paralyzation, but one where you can't move and you feel this lifting light floating sensation at the same time. This is the same process as when we are having an astral projection. You, the awareness, is traveling out of the physical body via the third eye region, but you are still connected to your physical body with a phantom umbilical cord at the same time. While you are suspended outside your physical body in your aware state, there will come this sudden sensation of being very relaxed and calm. This will happen within the first two or so seconds of the flashing. Then your thoughts will immediately be silenced from your physical mind and you will maintain a silent, observing state of awareness. Within a few more seconds, you will feel a peaceful sensation and the vibrations will have subsided. 
in that peaceful sensation, visions will be projected into your awareness. You will experience visual images in a movie-like format of all of your past life memories flowing into your inner consciousness. The more visions you experience, the more you begin remembering who you are, and after a few more seconds, you will completely accept this knowledge and then understand what you are, where you are, and where you came from. In fact, the knowledge will be so invigorating that in a split second of accumulation, it will transform your entire perspective of what is happening to you while you are floating outside your body. Unfortunately, there are some of us who will not be able to cope with this reality because of the deep mind programming damage and to protect them, they will immediately be detected and shut down into a deep dreamlike sleep so that they can be transferred into another three-dimensional reality to help them cope and evolve into their true identity with their past life memories intact. During the separation of soul and body, your body will be regenerated to an optimal age and health condition, and your DNA will also be restored to its original design. At the same time that your body is being tended to, the reality that you live in will also be reprogrammed at a subatomic level and transform back into the original fifth dimensional design. Once your body is repaired and your memories are restored, your awareness will return into the newly regenerated age regress physical body and you will awaken to finally live and experience the fifth dimensional galactic world as it should be that has been hidden from us for the last 6,012 years. Now, will you become aware of yourself? Will you? So that was really interesting. I hope you enjoyed that. I just resonated with a lot of what he said and um, it got me thinking. And one of my neighbours here, De uh, Denson, he was saying that he was looking out his kitchen window one day and it was a completely different reality. It was these some um, rolling fields. We're on an island, so that was unusual. Rolling fields and these people were playing in the distance. So it was sort of like he was in the same place, but it was a altered, you know, fifth dimensional reality with a different light and everything. So it was like he was he was there already and he could see it. And so you know, that, that spoke to me, that video. So I hope that that gets you um, inspired to design your best life. Thank you so much for being with me today. I really appreciated it. And, um, you know, please join me next week and, and bring any comments that you have. I'd love to answer, you know, your comments. And um, and um, I'm hoping that you have a beautiful week in the meantime. And I'm going to bring you an amazing show next week, but I'm not going to give any secrets away just now. <laughs> so have a fantastic week and um, thank you so much for watching. Bye everyone.